Well, I like those graphics. Time now for News Abuse, where we expose the most abominable cases of malpractice in the American press. We're joined by our old friend and an expert on this subject, Howard Kurtz. He's, of course, the host of Sunday morning's Media Buzz program, which we never miss. Howie, great to see you. Great to be here. So you've got, I mean, there's so many possible topics. I had to topics. narrow it you, down you, for you, Tucker. What'd you get? Okay, Kellyanne Conway, Donald Trump's White House counselor, probably his chief defender on TV, drawing a lot of very personal flack for her role. New York Times columnist Frank Bruni writes of the dark magic of this right-wing operative. And Carl Bernstein, the former Watergate sleuth, had this to say on CNN. One of the great anonymous sources of our era is Kellyanne Conway. She does it every day. <laughs> she has been an anonymous source for the last 10 months, particularly during this campaign when it suits her. <laughs> and it's time to talk about what we do as journalists and what propaganda ministers do. And Bernstein says she is a propaganda minister. I love the fact that Carl Bernstein is decrying anonymous sources. The man who wrote Hello. the Watergate series is saying, you know what, I just don't like when people speak on background. It just makes yeah. me uncomfortable. They meet me in parking garages at night and tell me stuff. I'm against that. Yeah, I've totally <laughs> made my whole career. Totally but also, I mean, every operative aid advisor from every campaign, Democrat and Republican, they all speak to reporters off the record. Yes. And they spin and they deflect and they defend. That's what they do. So why single out... Kellyanne Conway as a propaganda minister, uh, unless maybe you don't like her and she's a former Republican. Well, sure, and plus, I mean, that they're all paid liars, but I think she's much more charming than most, my view. All right, so now, number two, we have, you talked about the John Lewis story. It was uh, on Friday that MSNBC aired that clip of the congressman uh, saying he doesn't regard Donald Trump as a legitimate president. And on Saturday, New York Times, Washington Post had nothing, zero, not a word about this attack because I guess illegitimate president didn't seem like that big a deal. Now, of course, <laughs> after Trump counterattacks and criticizes John Lewis, it's the lead story in the New York Times. Wait, so they never covered it the first time? No, I went through the papers, nothing in there. Because That's there was no predicate. So the headline, yeah. you said this, man, I just love it. Trump sets off a backlash with attack on civil rights icon, not on elected official or congressman or politician, but civil rights icon. He's the, the one member, and he is a civil rights icon, mm -hmm. but he was acting not in his capacity as such, but as a member of Congress. The so you, can't you call him that? The print edition says blacks perceive a callous rival in Trump. So, you know, look, we can certainly debate whether Donald Trump goes too far, when yeah. he goes after whether it's John Lewis or Alec Baldwin or Meryl Streep, right? But when you pick up the story sort of at round two, after the guy's been attacked, and you make his counterattack, his counterpunch the story, that seems a little unbalanced. With no predicate at all. Yeah, and by the way, if a veteran Republican congressman had said, I don't consider Barack Obama in 2009 to be legitimate president, do you think it would have taken a, more than a day for the papers to probably, go crazy? Probably not. All right, now, this is the worst one of all, in my view, because uh, Jeff Sessions, at his Senate confirmation hearing as Attorney General, brought his extended family, very common thing for yeah. nominees to do. Ira Madison III, he's an MTV writer, tweeted the following, and put it up on the screen. Session, sir, kindly return this Asian baby to the Toys R Us store you stole her from. Another tweet, he said, why is she a prop? This is the senator's young granddaughter. Yeah. She's a prop, because he doesn't like Session's positions politically. What's so creepy is that he saw her as an Asian baby rather than just a baby. Rather than just a baby, right. Right, it's a baby. Yeah. And a cute baby, actually. Took the, guy, took the guy, very cute baby. Took the guy two days to apologize, and, you know, MTV didn't do anything to him, you know, because this is just, I guess, in that crowd. Well, fine, we'll just take a shot at the family. That seems fair, doesn't it? Wait, they, they, they didn't even censure him or they just said, well, he, he speaks for himself. No, no action whatsoever. And a couple of days later, he did say, perhaps he had gone too far. And, I mean, you know, we talk about not bringing the kids of politicians into it. How about young grandchildren? It's just so...